Hello one and all. This is part three of uh, Death Trap Dungeon with Blitzel. And uh, I'm surrounded by interactive dogs, so hopefully there won't be too much chaos there. Right, should we press on? So Blitzel got to the iron door just past the bridge, turned the key and the door opened. So he's on to the final push. Now, what happened next? Well, he heard some voice calling him on towards the north, so he went that way. And he found an old crazy man hiding behind a wicker basket, saying, Oh, give me something and I will give you a lift up to the level above, which is where you want to go. Well, <clears throat> Blitzel gave him a gold a gold coin, and he accepted that, jumped in the basket, something started hoisting it from above, and he gets to the top, <clears throat> and it's Ivy. Originally, Ivy is supposed to be a troll, so she's been turned into a half-giant for the purposes of this. And <clears throat> she grabs Blitzel at the top and says, I want something too. And Blitzel sees a painting in the room and says, Oh, well, um, uh, that person looks very much like you. And she says, Yeah, it's my brother. And she starts staring lovingly at it. And, you know, he um, rolls a, uh, like a persuasion type of charm, basic test sort of dealy do, um, and uh, gets her distracted and uh, whacks her over the head. She's knocked out. He finds an old bone in the room and takes that, uh, which is quite handy, really. Nyark, nyark, because the next bit is uh, stairs that lead down to a room with two guard dogs in. So those interactive dogs being very interactive. You can just see a, a tail in the bottom corner there. I'm having to separate two interactive dogs at the moment because one interactive dog has just had surgery and the other interactive dog is a little bit boisterous and might attack the first interactive dogs and open up his stitches. So that's why they're separated here by that cage thing. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, having to slightly keep an eye on that as we go as well to make sure the interactive dogs don't get too interactive and fight and pull that open. Play fight, I should say. They're nice boys, really. Right, anyway. Um... Chuck the bone for the guard dogs. It's funny that, isn't it? It's all dogs everywhere. There's even more interactive dogs now. There's interactive dogs in the adventure. I'm surrounded by dogs. Oh, well, anyway, these ones went for the bone and Nash Nash Nor Nor and, and do what dogs will probably do. And that's one of them think the bone is his and then get aggressive over it and then start growling at the other one. And then they get into a snap fest, especially as the fact that they're testosterone filled guard dogs so yeah he snuck on through without getting noticed came to a wall climbed it the old rope and um, grapple hook took a look in and it was basically a um a, a dragon that had its wings clipped so uh he threw a um bone charm thing for it and uh, it got stuck in its mouth and grew in size and all the stuff you're supposed to do in the book, you know. Ran past it, avoided its body as it tried to smash him against the wall as he tried running down, even though its mouth wasn't useful anymore. Um, yeah, and <clears throat> he ran around around that, came to uh, another door that led to another passage that took him... To a room of pillars, came into that room and fought basically a ninja. Gosh, throwing star from behind, some inner voice inside him warned him, you know, duck. Is it the uh, black bear spirit inside him? Yes, maybe. Oh, yes. Um, and yeah, he ducked, got away from that, and attacked the ninja. And really, you know, there wasn't much of a fight because uh, he disarmed the ninja, took his sword off of him, and that was about that, really. 
So he said, look, do you want to live? Because you know, I, I, he even caught the disarmed sword, you know. he's Blitzel's pretty badass. <laughs> um, and then he just said, all right, spare me my life and I'll, and I'll give you what I have. So he slid his pack over and he had like rice and water and uh, a diamond. Oh, that was handy, wasn't it? So, <clears throat> yeah, the ninja lost his diamond and he retreated back into the dungeon to get away from it. So, uh, he carried, who knows what's going to happen with the ninja now, you know? He's, he's uh, stuck in there, presumably. Is he going to become one of the threats in the dungeon now? One of the persistent threats trying to uh, take out other challengers so that he can forge his way to escape mm, in the ensuing years. Well, anyway, uh, he, he then took another passage and it went all round and curvy and until it finally came to a very strange room. And in this room was a blood beast. Hideous, horrible creature. You'll be able to see the picture of it and the age stats conversion I made for it uh, on the uh, link below in the info bar where it goes to Dragon Age Oracle. So I put it up there. So it was just a basic conversion. I wanted to feel as if I was staying true to the way the Blood Beast is. And you'll see from looking at that, the Blood Beast is very much... Uh, he's, he's not so much that he kills you. You will die indirectly by being around the Blood Beast. Because of the toxic fumes that come up from the slime that I assume he produces, you know. I imagine the idea that he belches all of his uh, internal acids into a pool around him. Makes his prey dissolve in it. And then slurps it up. So... Pretty nasty, pretty nasty. A bit like a fly, but without the proboscis kind of thing. Just sits in a pool of its own muck. Blah. And he's got this sticky tongue thing. And he lashes onto you and like pulls you in. And so it's 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 all like stunt based and range based. And the degrees of damage you take is based on the degrees of range. And ugh, nasty, nasty creature. Blitzel started running through. He's got a great constitution, so he started holding his breath. Uh... <clears throat> he got pulled and, and pulled on. Blitzel starts like hacking at the thing. Uh, <clears throat> he goes into just goes for it, you know. And um, he didn't want to fight fight the thing outright. Oh, and it's got spikes on it as well. Oh, damn. Yeah. So anyway, he didn't want to fight it. So he wanted to try and just run around it because there's a path that goes around the edge of the slime pit that it is in. So... He's trying to follow that path, but, you know, it's uh, a little bit circuitous, so it put him in different range degrees of the, the fume, so he's having to rock all these tests, and, you know, every one passes, he takes a massive damage, and that kind of thing, and if he hits zero, it's not that he's died, it's that he's passed out from the fumes, basically. Because, again, you know, HP should be that. Let me just check that this interactive dog isn't being too interactive. Oi! Leave, 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 leave. <sighs> it's ripping things up. <sighs> A little sod. Right, anyway. Um, so, anyway. Yeah, we had... He ran past it, got past it, basically, in the end. And he got dragged to the very edge of the slime pool. So that was a thing. But he was like a yard away from being pulled into the slime. So he got past that and managed to cut the tongue right off and run out of the room. And then he ran into a room where there was a manticore. So... Gizmo, leave! The old head of a man... The body of a dragon and, uh, oh no, sorry, the wings of a dragon, the body of a lion, and this tail with these spike things on. And they started flinging these spikes, and Blitzel didn't have a shield. 
and he maybe figured that he could start using the pillars to protect himself. But uh, it was a fairly straight up fight and Blitzel is a Storm Rider, which is basically a monster hunter anyway, so... And he's a Navaran. He's comfortable fighting these big sort of things. So, he did take out the Manticore in a pretty much uh, David and Goliath, but, you know, David was always going to have it kind of bout. And then comes forward the final, final Trial Master, who says, um, this is the exit door. It's got a gem lock. You need to put the right three gems in the right combination to get out. So he got a combination wrong at first, and the white beam blasts him, and then he gets the combination right, second try, and, you know, the door unlocks, and he's about to go out. But then, the little trial master throws down a, a poison globe, and out comes this gas, and he runs on ahead, and Blitzel takes some damage, and he basically, he's been stuck in there like a slave too, so he makes a break for it. The gas clears, Blitzel starts walking out of the dungeon, and uh, what should he see? But the little guy dead up ahead in the passage on the way to daylight. Basically, he fell afoul to the dungeon's final dreaded trap, which was a crossbow bolt lodged in him, sticking right out of him. And so Blitz Blitzel walks out and gets the adoration of the crowd, and Baron Sukhumvit uh, isn't very happy about it, but he has to hand over the prizes and all that, all the gold makes him very rich. Um, he's now the trial of the champions, Blitzel's done it, and uh, he didn't kill Sukhumvit, like he, he he was thinking, oh, maybe I'm going to take the other, you know, Throm's mission on as my own mission now, and take him out, I'm close enough, but no, he didn't do that, I guess the world was watching, you know, <clears throat> and, you know, Sukhumvit's not a great warrior, he's just a devious, evil, Kalsharok sod, so, Blitzel is the champion of the walk, and it's happened. You know, someone's beaten Death Trap Dungeon. So, until next time, I'll see you at the table.